start like, Max, 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 had one. Hi, good morning. How's it going? How's everybody doing? What's up? Welcome to the vlog. I don't know. Oh, it's the ambulance. Um, so I don't know if I'm gonna use this as my intro clip. We'll see. Oh, <laughs> good God. <laughs> What's up? Sitting outside waiting for a dental appointment. So getting a little bit of like a free size situation done so that they sit more comfortably. And I figured that I would sit down and chat with you a little bit. Talk about what I'm hoping for this vlog. What I'm hoping is that we're going to do. I like whenever people do that. I like whenever they kind of give us a little bit of an idea of what's going to go into the vlog. I don't have like a strict set, this is what we're doing, we're sticking to it. Just kind of like an idea. So a few things that I would like to do. So after my appointment, I would like to go to the thrift store, walk around, see what they have, see what's good. Father's Day is this weekend. So I'd really like to find something for Martine. Probably not at the thrift store, but I do need to go out at, to some store at some point. I have bought, I'm gonna crank up this air a little bit. I hope you don't mind. It's hot in here. So I don't know what I wanna get him. I know it's super close to Father's Day already. Um, and I've been like spitballing and throwing things out there, but nothing has really hit, you know? So like I have three little things for him, but he spoiled me for Mother's Day. So I would like to spoil him for Father's Day if I can. I just ask him like what's like some stuff that you have been wanting and he because we usually we we tell each other what we want and then we buy it <laughs> like we we are so bad at surprising each other with gifts because he's super specific in the things that he likes and I'm super specific in the things that I like and we want to get something for each other that we know we'll use and so rather than just playing like this game of will they won't they we pretty much always know what we're gonna get each other. I did get him a pair of bluey pajama pants and a t-shirt that I thought he would really like. And then as well as I'm gonna do like a little photo cube, but I just feel like I should do something else as well. And I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do. So thrift store, that's on the agenda. I have this cute little DIY that I've been wanting to do that I put on my June Pinterest kind of vision board thing. So maybe we'll do that. It's like a adding charms and stuff to a chain on a purse with like ribbon, super duper cute. So as for the book situation, I am finally finishing the War of the Lost Hearts trilogy. Oh my God, so much has already happened and I'm only like 30% in. I brought it with me. Uh, I also have the physical edition. I find it so much easier to read on my Kindle because it's such a chunky book, but I might um like go through and annotate in my actual physical copy. I don't know. I'm 33% in and I still have like seven and a half hours left. So she a chunky book. So far, I'm enjoying it. I don't know why I waited so long. I actually waited so long that I forgot majority, like a good chunk of what happened in Children of Fallen Gods. But luckily I was like looking at the looking on the internet, seeing if I could find a good summary on it, like a spoiler filled summary of Children of Fallen Gods. And Carissa Broadbent, the queen herself, made us a spoiler full plot summary of everything that happens. Everything, like pretty close. The important things that happened in Children of Fallen Gods. And bless, because that helped me so much. There were so many things that I forgot that happened. <laughs> like, oh shit, yeah, that happened. Um, so loving that. This is like peak romanticy to me because you get the politicalness, the wars, that aspect but you also get the romance and it's not spice heavy at all as somebody who's just not a huge fan of the steam part of books it's perfect and so far as for now Cadwan, they could never make me hate you i am a stand for Cadwan. i know that he is doing some pretty unethical things at the moment but He's protecting his people. He is the definition of he would burn the world for you, but also he's not like that inherently super stereotypical, broody, morally gray kind of character. He is like a calm presence and he just radiates this confident energy, but not in an arrogant way. Just he's so sure of himself and he knows what he wants 
but he's not evil in any way. He's just doing some questionable, unethical kind of things in order to protect his people and protect the one that he loves and oh, I love him. I like all the girlies are like Max, 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 Cadwan. Cadwan is mm. And I really hope it stays that way. He's the kind of king, the kind of ruler where his people really respect him and they really think highly of him and talk so well behind his back and have nothing bad to say about him. And I don't know if she's, if she's, if, if Carissa Broadbent is trying to trick us and manipulate us into loving him in order to rip my heart out at the end. I'm going to be so, so mad. <laughs> so mad it's gonna be soul crushing anytime I, there's a scene with Cadwan, i'm just like eating that shit up so mother of death and dawn is the third book in the trilogy so there's not really too much that i can say without giving it away which i might full well do a spoiler section in this video for this book because there's so much to talk about so much that just i can't believe that i put this series down for so long you basically, like the whole premise of this book is that uh, there's these two kingdoms that it's the human kingdom and the fae kingdom and humans have been taking fae people and doing really horrible things to them and so the fae are really tired of it and they're, revol they're revolting against the humans finally like stepping up and taking care of it and, but like they're both doing such terrible things to the other side. Meanwhile, like the humans obviously are the bad ones in this, but the Fae are going to also terrible circumstances in order to fight back. And I mean, it feels pretty validated to be honest, but it's to a point where the Fae just hate the humans so much they don't care if they're innocent or not. And then you've got Tasana and Max and Samarin and another character who is in the middle of this and they're trying to kind of like, not mediate, but solve these issues on their own. And so Tasana has this, this key that both sides want. So both sides are also, they're fighting each other, but they're trying to fight Tasana. or find Tasana in order to use this. And it's just like, there's so many layers to this book of different subplots. It's just so incredibly well thought out. This was like the kind of energy that I was hoping that Serpent of Wings and Night would give off. And as much as I love Serpent of Wings and Night, it does not compare to Daughter of No Worlds. Just the War of the Lost Hearts trilogy in general. So good. And if you're feeling really stagnant, if you read Daughter of No Worlds and you're like, I'm not really vibing with Children of Fallen Gods, it gets better. It gets so good. You just have to kind of push through those really slow parts in order because like the second half of the book just takes off and it's just so crazy and the plot veers in so many different directions you can never really guess where it's gonna go and I just this is probably like I would say like one of my favorite series of all time just so good and well put out together I have other thoughts but I've got to go in my appointment is in like 10 minutes so I should go inside um but I'll talk to you I'll probably see you at the thrift store was kind of a bust today and I even stood in there like a little extra longer thinking maybe if I stick around long enough I'll really find something maybe it's like super well hidden because the thrift gods were just like calling me today but they tricked me nonetheless I still got a few things because <laughs> I have a problem was this hoodie I have like one zip up hoodie that I just religiously wear all the time because it has the right fit and I found this one and it's black and so I found this one, which is like a pink hoodie. 
the brand pink it's not actually the color pink it fit right and it has like that hoodie that hoodie feel you know what I mean it was on sale for like a dollar um, it's just a little black slip skirt and it has this where is it it has a slit right here and then I thought the lace around it was really pretty and I bought a t-shirt I might give this to my brother I might keep it I don't know but it is this really pretty green with Legend of Zelda but I like that it's old Legend of Zelda so and then I got a binder to find a book so that's what else we're gonna do in this vlog is to find a book so it's gonna be like a little teeny tiny itty bitty book but nonetheless it still takes a lot to find so I think I've got everything that I need to find it now so we could do that soon I'm super hungry so I'm gonna go home and eat <laughs> Here's the thing, I have to talk kind of quietly, so this is going to be like a little ASMR segment because Enzo is sleeping right next to me while well, my husband is going to jump in the shower real quick and I want to do some more reading. However, I don't want to move forward. I want to do some more reading. However, I don't want to move forward without getting these thoughts out because I'm, I'm at this point where shit is about to go down and I have theories and suspicions that might or might not be confirmed within this next literally like chapter and page that I'm about to read. So I want to sit down and chat about some stuff that's gone down in this book. And I just know stuff's going to go down. It's usually about like the 50% mark where Carissa Broadman like really the twists are happening, shit goes down. You know what I mean? I wrote, I've been writing them down so I don't forget because you know the ADHD be wild and out here. So last I left you off, I was kind of talking about how each side of the war has like their own reasoning for what they're doing, right? You can kind of see like why from both sides a little bit. Really not the humans though, I don't want- humans are just assholes. <laughs> they're just greedy motherfuckers, which like, real. So, so whenever I say that, I mean like, I can just understand why the fake king is do doing what he's doing. Let me get in a better position. This is going to be some spoilers chatting. So if you don't want to hear any spoilers, I'll put up like a little tab here. And then um, the chapter, you can just kind of skip ahead to the non-spoiler section, I guess. Because everything I'm about to talk about is spoilers or it is um, theorizing about certain things happening in the book. Okay, basically what's happening um, so far in this is that there is this thing called the Wayfinder and it was an artifact that Tasana touched and it absorbed into her body and so it has sort of become one with her, right? And this Wayfinder is a compass basically to guide whoever is wielding it to these things called the Laharas. I think I'm saying that right. Laharas? Laharas or Lajadas or depending on what accent you want to use. Anyways, so there's three Lajadas. They are basically wells of magic. This deep, incredibly powerful magic that if wielded all three together, you could create 
an entirely new reality. It's just been a legend and there are some people who believe in it pretty highly and then there are other people who are just like, ah, it's just legends, like we don't really know what it is or anything. And Kadwan is somebody who believes that it is real along with Ishka and uh, Tasana and Max and them. They believe it is real. And so Tasana has had this wayfinder absorbed into her body so she can find the Lahadas. And so they are about to find the Lahada. But here's my thing is that we have three main characters, right? And this was before I hit a certain point in the book that basically confirmed what I was thinking. But we have three main characters and three keys that need to be used in three very specific locations. And each character is connected by magic. So Tasana, Max, and Aifa, um, they're all connected through their magic. And so Aifa can kind of see through Max and Tasana, and she kind of has like this location tracking on them because their magic is connected. It pulls them like a thread, right? And then Tasana and Max also had the same thing with each other as well. So they are all very connected by this magic that they shared. And so I believe that they'll use the three keys to end the war, basically is the thing. Uh, and it was confirmed because, well, confirmed in my mind, because they end up going to this place called the Zorog? Zorgo. Zagos? Zagos? I think it was Zagos. These names, Carissa, what the hell? <laughs> and they talked with this guy, Klostos. Klop I don't remember his name, man. Some magic guy. And he was telling the legend of the Lahadas and basically saying that one Lahadas represents change. One represents death and one represents life. And that right there is basically a confirmation to me that what I am speculating to happen is going to be true. That they all three kind of have to work together. Because Max would represent change. Tasana would represent death because her magic is decay. And then Aifa represents life because her magic, she is literally bringing things to life. She was creating flowers and um, I believe that they each represent one of those keys to the wells and that they're going to have to use their magic together in order to harness it and create a new reality for the Fae to be safe. It also, the, like where I'm at this point now where like I'm really close to where the shit's going to go down, that there's this sort of voice, sort of sentience within the well of magic that is saying that Tasana's like, well, I'm going to wield you. I'm going to use you to how I want. And the magic's like, well, you can't do it alone or something along those lines. And so that also basically confirms that she's going to need Max and Aifa. And where I'm at is that Max is literally about to meet up. He's running towards Tasana where she is and he has just dipped into this black water, which is the well of magic. And then Aifa is also on her way. Um, so that just like confirms to me that something is about to happen and so I really want to get back into it but um, there's been a couple of not discrepancies what is the word that I'm looking for inconsistencies not within the book itself I guess but just like with what characters are saying and it's kind of leading to me to believe like who's telling the truth kind of thing because we have Cadwan who if you remember from 10 minutes ago I was just like, nothing could make me hate you, Kadwan. I love you so much. Uh, all of his people highly respect him. He is saying that he wants to use the wells of magic in order to create a new reality for the Fae so that they would be safe from the humans, which sounds really nice and fair, right? But then we've got Ishka, who has basically been Kadwan's right man for the last 400 years. Uh, who is saying that Kadwan wants to use to destroy the entire human race. So which is it? Does He's telling Aifa that he wants to save the Fae by creating a new reality away from the humans, or is he wanting to literally off every single human? Which is it? Who is telling the truth? One of those games where, like, who do we believe? Who do we trust? We don't know. Because Ishka has betrayed before. Kadwan seems like a very respectable man not chaotic but he does like some pretty evil shit in order for like the better you know it's not like he just does evil to be evil he does it for good reasons it could go either way carissa could really turn Kadwan into this character that we hate 
or Ishka could betray Tasana and Max. I have no idea because he's betrayed people before. And then there was just like a couple of moments that I just really <laughs> loved so much. Max, he's completely forgotten all of his memory from after he turned 17, so he doesn't remember Tasana. He remembers her faintly, glimpses and images of moments and everything, but he doesn't like remember, remember, you know what I mean? It's very foggy and he's repressing, his body is repressing the memories because if he lets it through, then it's he's gonna remember of something horrible that he did that has really burdened him for a lot of his adult life. His body is keeping these memories away from him behind like this locked gate behind this wall. And he's like, I want to know what happened. I want to know what's gone down. But his body is just like, no, no, you don't. It's like this sentient voice within his head is like, you don't want to open that door. So anyways, what I was trying to get out with that was Max and Tatsana were fighting together at one point and it was like right whenever Tatsana found Max and Max had not seen her since losing his memories. And ha even though they hadn't even had like a conversation or anything, Max and Tatsana fight together so effortlessly, like a dance. And even though he doesn't remember who she is, it's just like... They don't even have to say anything, just their bodies react around each other so fluidly like they're one. And it was just so, such a beautiful thing to read and experience through those eyes. And I just love that so much. How is it ironic? Is that the right word to use? That in the first book, Tasana signed away her life, her rights, her choices to, she basically became a slave for the order to Zareth in order to give Max like a clean slate on his record that he would be forgiven for the the war crimes that he pulled. He would have a clean slate and he could just walk away from the order and not owe them anything, right? A clean slate is what she said. A clean slate and Zareth said, God, would I, we would all love one of those, wouldn't we? And then now in the third book, Max literally gets a clean slate because he doesn't remember anything of his time in the war but he literally got a clean slate and i think that's just wild that carissa is able to go back to that bargain and it's kind of like one of those things like careful what you wish for because it can be taken very literally it is a wild ride i cannot believe that i'm only 47 percent in the way to this book because so much stuff has happened already it feels like a lot has happened yet like not a lot has happened you know they haven't made a lot of progress in the war and i just know that the moment that max remembers everything is going to be a heavy hitter when brian figures out his brother what happened to their family oh my god that i gotta get the tissues ready for that because holy shit that's gonna be a hard that's where i'm at on my thoughts so far i think there's a few things that i highlighted but the most important things that I wanted to talk about, I put in my notes. I'm trying to think if there's anything that I can say that's like not really spoilery. I don't have too much to say on the non spoily part because, I mean, it is the third book in a series. It's the last book in the trilogy and I'm like halfway through. I will say this, Carissa Broadbent just does such a fantastic job with tying some things in the third book all the way into things with the last book or with the first book. Um, it's it's very much so like a be careful what you wish for kind of thing and i am so scared yet eager to see how some of these character arcs pan through and whether or not we're gonna like the characters that we love if we're gonna turn out to hate them or if the characters that we hate are gonna turn out to love you know also <laughs> i can't with the names dude you've got literally you've got ishka yashka miashka those are three separate people and then you got Naraja, Zarenth, uh, Nura, Samarin, Tasana, Kadwan, Aifa, Moth, and then our protagonist male lead, his name is Max. <laughs> I mean, like, his full name is Max Antarius, but then you got Max. What is with these names? I'll never get over it. <laughs> Reminds me of um, the horse from Rapunzel. His name was Max Antarius, wasn't it? I, I said this before, I think, that I wish Serpent in the Wings of Night would have held up to this a little bit more because it feels like two totally different writers. 
I feel like Serpent in the Wings of Night, the way it was written and just like the whole premise and plot and everything, it just doesn't feel as developed as Daughter of No Worlds does. And I guess Daughter of No Worlds can be a little bit complicated at some times, but it is really just peak political fantasy for me and I love it so much I'm eating it up. It's crazy to think that Daughter of No Worlds came out before Serpent in the Wings of Night. I'm just using some of this Frenchy Citrus Amber Spray. It smells so good. Okay. So last weekend I had a baby shower job and I have like 400 photos now that I have to go through and <laughs> probably more than 400 to be honest. I take a lot of photos. I like to over deliver. It's a lot harder on myself, but I like to keep the people happy. So I have photos that I need to go through and pick out which ones that I want to sit down and actually edit and work with. Work-wise, basically that's all I'm really going to do today. I might make a few TikToks because I did do my makeup and it turned out pretty good. I'm not going to, like, I'm going to toot my own horn a little bit because it doesn't happen often. So one little trick that I've been using with my makeup is I have this little purple pencil. I have hazel eyes, so very much so green and... <laughs> The opposite of the color spectrum from green is purple. And so I put this underneath of my eye a little bit, like right here and in the corners. Makes them really pop. And I have really light, minimal, I don't have any eyeshadow on. And so it just makes it pop, baby. I got my tablet, sh or not my tablet, I got my laptop. She's all charged up. She old though, she old as hell. I wish that I could do all of my editing on my laptop, but she's so old that I can only maybe edit like half a video at a time, not even a full video, man. And what do you mean low battery? You were plugged in all day. What? Oh, okay, no, it's full. <laughs> yeah, she's been through it. Um, it's a MacBook. What year were you? I want to say 2015 MacBook Pro. It's just so slow. Like there's this tab right here that literally will not go away no matter how many times I click it. Just won't go away. That's there just permanently. <laughs> I love having the MacBook because it connects through AirDrop with my phone and everything. I like editing with CapCut. Uh, CapCut has been amazing because I used to not be able to edit on my big PC because I just didn't want to pay for any Adobe or anything like that. Apple has iMovie already in their system, so it just made it really easy to use all the time. But now, now that I have CapCut, I just don't use iMovie because this laptop is so slow. So I'm gonna call through these. I wish I had an easier way, but I don't. So we're just gonna have to make do with what we work with. I did two photo ops. I did a baby shower for like four, three and a half hours. And then I did a maternity shoot immediately after leaving. I literally left from the baby shower to go to the maternity shoot, drive 30, 40 minutes away. So that was a crazy day. I really had a lot of fun with it. finished calling all of them and then I also transferred them to my phone because I do edit through Lightroom on my phone because I refuse to pay the $20 price because Adobe is whack. Adobe is so whack. I wish that there was a better alternative. Lightroom-esque kind of open source. I've tried Darktable. I've tried Raw Therapy. I am not a fan of either one of them. I need to sit down and like really play around with it. Editing them on my phone, I ended up having 224 photos Plus, I have like another 
60 or something like that from the first photo shoot I did with them a couple weeks ago. So overall, I'm probably going to have them about like 300 photos, which is kind of wild for a baby shower, but she was very very adamant about the fact that she wanted sorry that ceiling fan is so distracting she was very very adamant that she wanted a lot of photos of the details of everything that she did and put into the event so I wanted to make sure to get enough of the detail photos while also getting photos of just the party and the people enjoying it in general I haven't spoke with her yet but I'm gonna see if she wants me to print off like a photo album like a professionally printed off photo album because she just really went all out for this event uh let me see if i can find a good photo that kind of shows without people in it i guess just really went all out and everything was so incredibly gorgeous she just put so much thought and effort i think that she would really like to have an actual physical photo album to either give or keep. I am probably gonna hang out here for a minute because what time is it? I'm gonna go make some lunch. I don't think I'm gonna edit any of those photos today because just like calling them all is a huge task in itself and I have other things that I need to do today. I would like to do some reading, also some cleaning, try and like deep clean. Not deep clean but like almost kind of reset some spaces my bedroom needs a lot of attention again it, when my kids get in there they know how to fuck a room up i'll tell you what i try and stay on top of it but it's like it's so impossible to stay on top of everything all the time my cuñada one of my cuñadas i should say she is a swifty through and through and so i my husband is going to mexico here soon and I wanted to make her like a little bound book of her favorite album from Taylor Swift and so Midnight's is her favorite album so I have all this stuff to do it and I've started it but I do need to finish it so we'll probably have some book finding in this video which I think will be really fun and I'm having a lot of fun with it so far it's a super tiny book I've already got the signature all done it's just one single signature and I've got this little ribbon that is gonna be like a bookmark with a chain not mm. chain charm <gasps> this is what it looks like and it's shiny ombre that I did with my gel pens and then it has the lyrics and little photos from the album itself and I tried to do it all in the theme of midnights and then there's the actual midnight rain page which I wish that there wasn't this little white space here, but I reprinted this so many times that I literally used every single piece of cardstock paper, sticker, white premium paper that I had. I, I don't want to talk about how many times I had to print this out. It's kind of embarrassing. And this is the second book that I bound of it. So this has been a labor of love. I designed all of the pages and stuff and went through and did all the lyrics and all that. And like, I put a lot of thought into this, but also I like down here that the glitter I put some glitter over where there was like glitter in the picture so it looks like it's more you know what I mean I bought this foil heat press stuff so that I can cut out some stars and stuff on it using my Cricut and I'm gonna use that on the cover I found this at the Dollar Tree y'all this is literally the perfect color this was the exact shade that I was looking for so I'm gonna turn this into book cloth using heat bond and tissue paper these are gonna be the end papers inside and I don't know which color I want to go with should I do the shimmery silver or should I do the shimmery lavender? The ribbon. So here's the ribbon that's gonna have the charm. So those would match. Fingers crossed uh, that it works out. I think it will. I don't see why it would have any issues. I bound, you see it right there? That, that little book right there, that little book is manacled. And so I think that if I can bind that manacled, I can really do anything. Because that, that was, that was a toughie. Probably gonna sit here. Uh, like I said, make lunch. Bestie Tori, Tori Between Pages, she is having her very first stream today, and so I figured I would pop in over there 
she starts in about 20 minutes and so I want to be there to support her. She's going to start streaming gaming and I'm so excited for her. So I'm going to pop over there, say a little hello and um, probably hang out, eat some lunch and wait for Enzo to wake up. I got nap locked once again. I got nap locked yesterday and I stayed nap locked until I absolutely could not hold my pee anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Which was for a while, like a, a, a couple of hours I got nap logged, unfortunately. You see, because there's this point where he falls asleep, but you can't move him too soon because he'll wake up. And then he'll fall into a deeper sleep, and there's usually, that's like a safe time to move him. But I waited too long. And now if I move him, he's past that threshold to where he's not really in a super deep sleep anymore. And if I were to move him or change the atmosphere at all, around the house then he would wake up and I know that if I moved him now he would wake up and he would be really cranky because it wouldn't be enough sleep but he would also be very difficult to put back to sleep so it's just like a I don't know what I'm trying to say I'm just making some book cloth and this is the best and most like affordable way that I've been able to find how to do it because a lot of typical book cloths that you can buy online there's just not like a huge variety and so I'm pretty picky whenever it comes to like color shades and stuff so this is just a crafter square that I bought from the Dollar Tree which is actually crazy because it's the exact color that I wanted and then I've got some tissue paper which I'll probably just use the white and there's this heat bond that I have as well so what we're gonna do is I'm ironing out the actual fabric right now to try and get rid of some of those creases. It is a little hard, but I did get it like the middle portion of this book cloth is pretty, pretty good without creases. I want this side to be the cover. I, it just looks a little bit cleaner on that side, I guess. I'm just gonna cover it with some heat bond. I'm also trying to film a TikTok for this as well, so <laughs> if I'm missing some parts, that's why. So we're gonna go ahead and stick it down like this and just double checking. Yes. I'm gonna go ahead and iron this. And then after attaching the heat bonds to the paper, I went ahead and ironed on the tissue paper. And now I have a piece of book cloth to work with. It's seriously that easy. So now I am going to create the hardcover. except I am gonna get like a, a light bulb that changes colors. So I'm gonna test it with this light bulb that was right there. Hi, so now I just designed a little cover on Canva. It's literally just some stars and it says Midnight's. I bought this HTV off of Amazon. It's just this really shiny metallic tea vinyl warehouse. 
and then I'm putting it on my Cricut mat. And I'm just going to cut this out and use my janky ass Cricut. <laughs> oh my god, this Cricut has been through some shit. It's missing the whole bottom half here, yet somehow it still works. And then for some reason my computer never is able to connect with Cricut, so I do have the Cricut app. What I end up doing is I design it on my computer and save it all in there onto my Cricut, uh, what is it called? My Cricut cloud. And then it is saved, so I have it saved here at midnight. And then I can make it. And I just need to mirror it and then just click next. And then eventually my Cricut will pop up right here. It's pretty simple. Would I get a Cricut again? Probably not. I would probably get like a silhouette if you're looking and in the market because Cricut is just, they're money hungry. And I think it's so stupid that they've started this subscription monthly membership that if you want like more than 20 cuts or something like that, more than 20 uploads, then you have to pay money. And I think that's so stupid. That's something new that they started like a year ago or so. Whenever this is their quality of machinery, literally nothing happened to it. It just like starts, started cracking suddenly and just fell apart. I finished it. I look crazy. It's been a day. But I think I finished it. I don't think I have anything else to do to it. Here she is. I love the foil so much. Foil on the back did get messed up a little bit because when I was peeling it, the really thin parts like didn't work out. But I didn't want to have to scrap that whole piece of foil. And it's got a little bookmark thing and I ended up messing up on the inside too so once you open it it's just straight cover page. It was supposed to be purple on this side and then I was trying to trim it. I was trying to trim it I ended up trimming it like way over here so it just looked really silly so I just ended up trimming the whole thing and I don't know how I feel about it. Anyways I'll give you like a little flip through. Here's the glitter. This is only my second book that I've ever bound, so. And the back. The back turned out a lot better. This is how it was supposed to look on the front, but it is what it is. And then also right here, I did these stars. And it was supposed to say Midnight's, but again, the font was so small it just wouldn't fit. So I think this is just how I'm going to keep it for now. <laughs> So that means it's um, Martine's day off. Oh, Sorry, I'm like frozen. It's Saturday, which is Martine's day off. And typically Saturdays are errand days for us. However, it's Father's Day weekend. So we went and took Martine to go get his haircut. And he has not had his haircut professionally. Like in an actual barber shop here in the U.S. Ever, I don't think. Uh, he's only had it cut in a barbershop in Mexico, and then I've been cutting his hair for the, like the last 10 years, but his brother is getting married this weekend, and then so he went and got his hair cut done, and now he is going to the movie theater with our two oldest kids, and they're gonna go see Inside Out 2, so they're very excited for that, so that's where they are right now, and mommy is at Aldi's, in the Aldi's parking lot nomin on some ice cream as my little treat <laughs> i would have gotten the cookie two-step 
but they didn't have it in this size. And I typically wouldn't eat this much ice cream, but I won't be going back home for like another solid two hours or so. So this ice cream's gonna be way gone melted. So I have to take one for the team and eat the whole thing. And then we're gonna go over to Sam's Club and pick up some things, cause tomorrow for actual Father's Day, I'm gonna cook some birria and some family is gonna come over and we're just gonna have birria. I can barely say it with my new teeth. Birria, birria, tacos. I have to relearn how to roll my R's with my teeth. And then I also, <laughs> listen, I don't wanna hear nothing. I bought this big ass coffee instead of going to Dunkin', okay? This was like $3. And I just put it in my little cup here with some ice instead of going over to Duncan and spending seven, eight dollars on a coffee a third of the size. Not even a third of the size. Yum. No. No. I wish I would have did an OOTD of this outfit today. I did it for TikTok, but I forgot to do it for this vlog. But it's really cute. I've got the sweater vest with the white tee and my wide leg jeans. Cause I've been out and about and I'm all sweaty now. So I probably won't vlog in Sam's. Just cause I don't like vlogging in public when I have my kids. I like to focus all my attention around me while I have them. Cause people are crazy, okay? But I'm safe in my car right now. All locked up with the AC. So I'm fine right now. There's a lot of people around. Although, that doesn't really say anything, does it? You're not see right here. I know you want to steer. You're almost done. Okay. So I have a little bit of an update for Mother of Death and Dawn. I haven't gotten too much further, I would say, since the last time I updated. Uh, I'm probably about like 20% of the way in through now. And I just have a few thoughts because this book is suddenly like uh, I don't want to say it's suddenly going downhill but there's just like a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense and it's just let's get into it so I think this portion is gonna have a little bit of it's gonna have a lot of spoilers actually so if you would like to skip that I'll put the channel down or not channel one more chapter I'll put the chapter down here as well as I'll have like a outline around the box here so that if you don't want any spoilers feel free to pass but if you want to hear me sit here and if you want to sit here and listen to me rant about some issues that I'm having, then feel free to stay. So, oh, I'm in, oh, okay. All right, here's the thing is that I think the last time I left off, I said shit was about to go down. Shit went down. Not exactly how I thought it would, which is totally fine. Um, not all three of them work together for the hottest power but they all have gotten their powers back. And then also Max getting his memories back was pretty anticlimactic, but I guess it happened in the, not in the best way, but uh, his reaction to it was pretty like blasé. It was just like, oh, okay. Yeah, that happened. He didn't really battle with that grief or anything. Brian still thinks that it was this other not rebels were they rebels just like a rebel crew and he had already gotten his revenge on them brian's gonna be pretty pissed whenever the truth comes out to that that's not even what i was gonna rant about my ranting okay so dasana and max believe that afa is like devils incarnate and that she is just so vile and heinous and evil and just pure hatred and she's actually like very kind and very justified i feel in a lot of her emotions and i think that you know if you had been experimented on and tortured for over 500 years and had every single will taken away from you you'd probably be pissed too <laughs> turned off her humanity for 500 years in order to get through it she really saw no end to it and she finally gave up her life like her life her life force and sacrificed it and then even that got taken away from her yeah she's pissed but now that she's back alive in an actual like body form she's 
really nice and she doesn't want she didn't want to focus on destruction she literally was creating life she was happy that she created a flower in her hand that's what she was so just ecstatic and enthused about and so they don't even know any of this and that they've seen each other in person and they just naturally assume that they're like both sides are evil so they just are fighting which is just uh, and we don't even know what Afa is, which I think is supposed to be, like, there's going to be a big moment that leads up to it to kind of enlighten us as to what Afa is. I don't really know what she is. I don't know if she's a creature similar to what Catawan has been creating. And that's why he got so weirded out that he was getting freaky with her a little bit. <laughs> I mean, fair. Here's the thing that I don't really understand about this whole premise of this book. I'm not really entirely sure that I understand the beef that Catawan has with Tasana whenever she literally did what he wanted and gave back Aifa, like cut that tie, even though it was gonna damage Max and Tasana. She literally gave Catawan what he wanted. And I still, I still love Catawan. I don't know. It's such like a mixed pot with him, which is morally gray, you know? Can't decide whether you want to hate them or love them. And I think that is a morally gray character done really well. It feels like a really big miscommunication between Tasana and King Catawan because they think that Catawan is evil and that Aifa is evil, but they just really want to protect the Fae people. And he did use his people in order to further the Threlians plot, but he wasn't happy about it. He did it because he felt threatened by Tasana and he felt that he needed that stronger army. If they tried to hold a singular conversation, that things could have been resolved, like from the beginning of the book, and we would never would have had this plot. Like, that's the other thing, is what are Sasana and Ishka even planning to do with the Lahadas? They've never made that blatantly obvious for us, I feel. If they have, it went right over my head. Ishka has just said that we need it because it has a lot of magic and it can help us defeat Nira and Kadwan. Okay, but they don't say exactly like what their plan is to defeat either one of them. But here's the thing. Um, we know what Cadwan wants. He just wants to create another reality for his fate people to go and live. Ishka thinks that Cadwan wants it to destroy all of the human race. We're still not super clear about that. There's three sides to every story. Nira is just power hungry and she wants a bioweapon fae. The Threlians seek to keep their slaves. Meanwhile, the slaves are rebelling. How do Max and Tasana think that they're going to solve this issue? By fighting? By unaliving more people on both sides? How does that make them better than anybody else? Just because they see that their way is better? I don't, I don't get it. So what I'm not understanding is why aren't the Fae people and the slaves, why aren't Catawan and Tasana working together to defeat, to defeat Nira and the Threlians? They both have the same agenda. The Threlians are evil. Catawan knows this. He doesn't feel good about their agenda, but yet, literally, Tasana is just trying to save her people from being slaves, which is exactly what Catawan is trying to do with his people and have them not be bioweapon slaves to Nura. Make it make sense. If they're both wanting the same thing, why are they not working together? Why? Instead, they're fighting each other and using more of their resources and conflict rather than just having a simple conversation. And they've seen each other, but they haven't even tried using words. They literally just start fighting. And I feel like the instigator in all of this is Ishka. I think maybe Tasana might have tried to talk to Catawan or Afa, but Ishka is sitting there like, no, Catawan is evil. Catawan wants this. So is Ishka really the one that's evil and is pushing for his own agenda? Because he keeps saying that wants revenge or something for his son because his son was turned into a bioweapon, which he's fine now and he's safe. And like, I get that you want that revenge. It's more so like, I'm just not fully understanding how this plot makes sense. And this is like miscommunication trope taken political fantasy and literally thousands of lives are at stake all because these people couldn't have a simple conversation and don't even get me started on people getting taken over and over and over there's other ways that you can have your characters be separated and trying to get all of these armies into one place rather than just having somebody constantly being taken i have been a ride or die for this series for so long this has really had no major impact on me emotionally I thought it was going to destroy me more. I only have like three hours left, so I'm trying to finish it. I didn't really care for Max and Tasana's steamy scene. I mean, it was okay. Nothing that I'm going to be hooting and hollering about off of the rooftops, you know what I mean? I think that Ava and Catawan's little scene that they had, 
Um, and that was just a little tomfoolery, a little playing around, you know what I mean? They didn't do any, they didn't, like, do the deed. Uh, and I think that was more fun and more butterfly-inducing than any other scenes that they've ever had. I've been rooting for my boy, Catawan, for quite a while, and I don't want to hate him because... He's in it for the right reasons. I don't feel this evil energy off of him, you know, unlike Nira, but maybe he's like a sleeper, you know what I mean? He is a very incredible, morally great character because you want to love him so much, but he is doing some terrible things. All sides of it feel justified in what they're doing, but he actually is on the good, a good side. It's just like a huge miscommunication thing. That's what's pissing me off the most about this book, I think. I know, you know what I think? I know that's what's pissing me off about this. So I'm not sure. I wanted to get this out though because I meant like a really big scene where everybody has come together now. Um, and so I thought some things might come to light on this situation. We'll see if they talk about it. I swear to God, if it's just like another miscommunication thing where they start fighting before they actually talk something out, I'm gonna be so pissed. <laughs> so looking at you, Carissa. So... Yeah, that's where I'm at. We're gonna see how this goes. And I will talk to you in the next update. Um, I'm back. Just as I theorized, nobody had any real conversations with one another. Shocker. And they all just started fighting. I, ha I do have a theory that I just touched on a little bit um, in the last clip. And I think that Ishka is the real bad guy here. Because, and it's after Nira is getting take, has been taken by Cadwan. Again, somebody else taken captive. What a concept. <laughs> and Miashka, which is Ishka's son, he's the one, Miashka is the one who was taken by Nira and she experimented on him and like cut off one of his wings and da 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 I think he's like, He's about to torture her to ask her some information, and he's like, I remember when you took this to you, looking at um, his wing. And she says, you came onto my land, you threatened my people. And he said, I was injured, I never meant to enter your land, I didn't even know it was yours. And she said, I saw you, I saw visions of what would come to us by your hands, I have no regrets about what I did. And I almost wonder... If she got Ishka mixed up with Miashka, because there's been several times in this book how similar they look alike, because obviously they're related. Maybe Nira thought that Miashka was Ishka, but that also catapulted the event of Ishka doing bad things. But I think Ishka is going to betray Tasana and Max um, and that little crew somehow and just want power for himself, I guess. I don't know. I don't know where this is going to go. So some things are happening. Some people are rising to power, right? And I can't believe that I so easily forgot about a bargain that Max made earlier. It hasn't come back into play. And I think that potentially is going to come back and bite him in the ass because it has not been mentioned at all since he initially made that bargain. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I've been doing this thing that whenever I slick my hair back, rather than using hairspray or a gel, I use castor oil instead. So it's like a little hair mask and it makes my hair look so shiny. I'll even add some to my ends back here because I'm gonna braid my hair. I've been on like my hair growing journey for quite some time now. I, what was it, like two years ago? Three years ago, like three years ago actually. It's a long time. Uh, I chopped like all my hair off up to the point that it was like way up here. But it was super bleached, super damaged because I wanted to go like Haley Williams orange. But now I'm on my hair healing journey of keeping mainly my natural hair. I would sleep on it while it was wet. I would, I would, 
I would use a hair straightener or hair curler every day and not put it on any um, heat protectant. Like I would do everything in the book that you're not supposed to do. So it's amazing that my hair didn't fall out. <laughs> I feel good this morning. I, I don't know what it is. Like my cycle is weird compared to like how most people's cycles work. I ovulate at like a really weird time. And so I don't know if that like makes my hormones a lot of work too. And so I feel the best right when I'm about to get my period. And then like first day flow and I'm just in utter hell. <laughs> I woke up this morning and I put the water kettle on so then I can make some peppermint tea. Took my supplements because I'm starting to take like vitamins and supplements and stuff for ADHD and just trying to like really get on track with that because life has been kicking my ass. I just feel such an immense brain fog and so tired all the time. Now I'm gonna go on the walking pad and finish the last hour that I have of Mother of Death and Dawn. I tried to finish it last night. Like I said, I've been drinking peppermint tea and while for, but it typically gives people energy, but for me, like it does the opposite and it knocks me the fuck out. <laughs> so I was read in bed, for, I think for like an hour and then I just couldn't keep my eyes open, even though I was trying so hard because I wanted to finish it. I'm gonna give one final update before I finish Mother of Death and Dawn. Um, because I did, there, some shit went down last night while I was reading. I'm sorry, Ishka. I talked some mad shit about you, and now I just feel like an asshole. Ishka, Ishka, Ishka. Like, Catawan went from zero to 100 real quick, taking a page out of Drake's book. That came out of left field! Catawan, they could never make me hate you. Because he is such a loving, an attentive character and he is such a good partner for Aifa. Like had to do bad things to protect those he loved and it has changed his character. So he didn't start off with this book as somebody just innately evil wanting to do evil things. Like he did them for a good reason, but we're at this point now where like, I kinda can't make excuses for you anymore. I can't align with what you're trying to do. And for us as readers, it's very, it's just hard because he's a character that we've loved so much up to this point for the last two books. We've loved him. And it's kind of crazy because like for Aifa, she started off as this character that we absolutely just hate. And then now we feel such sympathy for her, but like you can understand why she is wanting to go back to being evil, but it's just, ah, uh, she's fucking with my brain. It's one thing, if it's one thing about Carissa Bradbrandt's writing is that she is not afraid to do her character dirty. And it is very abrupt and jarring at moments because it's stuff that you don't see coming. I'm gonna stop procrastinating now. Not procrastinating, I just, I wanted to get that out before I finished the book because I knew I was gonna have a lot more stuff to say once I actually finish. So I'm gonna pull up my walking pad and I'm gonna finish this book. There you go. to say that I have finally completed Mother of Death and Dawn. Oh, finally. Oh my gosh. This was so good. And I like, I know I complained and ranted about it for quite a while last night, but there were some parts that was very frustrating about it. Yes. Like mainly just that miscommunication kind of thing. Was it miscommunication? Would they have just had a conversation with each other? Yes. Towards the end, did they have a conversation with each other? Yes. But it came down to a lack of trust really got in the way, which ultimately is so true. You could look at somebody 
blank direct and say exactly what your intentions are and they might not believe you. I think that the ending was great. It turned out exactly how it needed to. I don't have a single complaint about the ending of the book. I thorough, thorough, thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm between a 4.5. I don't know if I want to give it the five star. Like 4.75, but then I'm like, why are you being so nitpicky with that? Because there was a point where you didn't even want to give it like a 4.5. I feel like if I give it a 4.75, I'm just being mean <laughs> because I really did enjoy it. I feel like something is holding me back, but you know what? I'll give it the five. I've given worse books five stars, so I'll give it the five stars. It was just genuinely so good. Oh. I'm gonna go make a coffee. It's 11 o'clock and I have not had a coffee yet. Wild. Thanks for sitting and yapping with me. I don't know why I'm trying to procrastinate this any longer, but I hope that you have a very wonderful, beautiful day. And of course, stay excellent. Bye.